Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and I got a couple things set out here on the bench. So let me really quickly summarize what I'm going to do, and then we'll get to work. It's a, uh, it's a, the oldest of my red wiggler bins that you see over here on this side. And what you've got over here is a brand new bin with no worms in it. It's a, it's a bin that I built just a few days ago, and it's just been sitting here kind of aging and priming, trying to allow it to get nice and cozy so that I can introduce worms into it. And we are going to introduce worms into it today, so it's going to be a brand new bin starting today. And in order to round up those worms, I've been trying to migrate worms out of this oldest bin of mine. So I've got some information about this oldest bin over here on this board. It's a, uh, at this present time, it's now been in service for uh, 159 days. And it was during the first 125 days that the system was just your everyday worm bin, getting fed food, worms composting the materials. And then at some point I decided it was time to start steering the system towards harvest. So I, uh, I did this intermediate stage that I like to do oftentimes, which is to withhold new feedings and just let the worms focus on whatever remaining tidbits remain in there, little scraps of this and that, leftovers of all the previous feedings that have not been eaten yet. Letting them turn their attention to those scraps so that what you're left with is mainly just castings. And then, um, and then most recently, I was uh, initiating, 10 days ago now, I initiated the final phase. And that's kind of the way I've been doing things lately, trying to just migrate the worms out of the finished compost. Because, you know, after they've foraged through everything and they've pretty much picked out all the food, and during that time I've been allowing the system to dry off a little bit, absence of food, absence of moisture, all things, you know, motivating the worms to, to get out. So to motivate them to get out of the dry, depleted side of the bin, I set up a, a brand new feeding zone, like I said 10 days ago, over on this edge, where not only is there fresh food in here, but it's the only part of the bin where I'm covering up with plastic so that it's the only place, as you can see here, where the dampness and the moisture recirculates. So, um, doing my best to make this end of the bin as unattractive to them and this side of the bin as attractive as possible for them. So, after 10 days, my hope is that I can, you know, hopefully extract a number of worms out of here, launch off this new system, but I'm also not expecting this to be completely de depopulated yet. So, I've got a few. Uh, a few morsels of food over here as well as some coffee. Stuff we're going to use to rebuild the feeding area and allow the migration to continue. So let's get in a little bit closer. I'll put my glove on and we'll get to work. So I've set the new bin aside. We'll get back to that one once we've got some worms to release into it. We're going to focus here on the collection of the worms. Hopefully we've got a good number of them that have congregated over on this side of the bin. And I've got this tray here into which we could place the worms that we uh, we collect. So I'm going to first off remove this plastic covering, my vapor barrier. And it'll go back on at the end. And then we could start moving things aside to give us access to the, to the material within the feeding area. I'm going to set this aside briefly. And man, this stuff definitely is dry. And that was the whole idea. The whole idea was that this stuff would get nice and dry, causing the worms to not want to be there and to seek out a nice damp place over there to hang out in. Something I've done in the past, which is pull out worms, reset the feeding area only to check, check back in later into the, um, into, the, into the compost to see if in fact there's any worms remaining that still need to be baited out. And then it seemed like, well, Turns out that the migration was actually complete and the reset of the feeding area was actually unnecessary. So I think what we're going to do here to begin is just try to evaluate how our um, depopulation of this material is progressing. At the same time, we're going to be able to um, place a lot of this really dry stuff out on the surface down deeper where it'll have a chance to absorb even more moisture down low, further drying the material further motivating the worms to want to exit. And there again, I'm assuming there's probably still worms out here. Because after 10 days, it would be kind of hard to believe that the entire contents, or at least the entire population, oops, of the bin has exited the finished compost. I believe that my record 
so far is something in the neighborhood of 18 days. And even then I was quite surprised to find um, how the worms had simply all left. You know, and that's the beauty of this method is that, you know, the worms move out of the finished compost on their own accord. And it's very, um, ooh, very um, unobtrusive. So you could quite you could see there's quite a number of worms remaining in this material, and they're obviously where you would expect them to be, which is down low, where the material is still nice and damp. That's the nice thing about the castings is that even though the top of the material has been pretty much air drying for a week and a half and has had a chance to shed a lot of its moisture, the material right below the surface is still completely damp. Because the castings just have this incredible ability to hang on to moisture somehow. So all I'm really doing is um, agitating the material, trying to bring some of the more um, damp stuff that rests down at the bottom up to the surface to give that a chance to dry too. While, um, while submerging a lot of the stuff that has already dried out, for the most part, out on the top. The one thing I generally try to avoid, though, is excessively stirring up the section right alongside the perimeter between the two between these two zones because I uh, I feel like, hey, if the worms have already made their way that close to where I want them in that feeding zone, then let's not set them back and move them away from there. Let's let them remain there and continue um, their journey towards the the feeding area. It's a very specialized feeding area because it's not just your everyday feeding area in your everyday worm bin. It's, it's what I affectionately refer to as the horizontal migration feeding zone. <laughs> An expression that a lot of people have poked fun at me about, but I don't mind. That's why I'm here, right? I'm out here to take any criticism that's worth listening to and hopefully you'll learn from it. That was the main reason I started this channel in the beginning anyway. When I started into this whole hobby with absolutely no knowledge of what I was doing. <laughs> I started my channel mainly for the purposes of uh, obtaining feedback from people who knew a lot more than me. About what was going on with, uh, with the worms and how they behave and what they're doing. And how to best get the results in your worm bin. With uh, the least amount of effort. The lazy man's approach. So I think you'll agree, just from picking around this stuff, there's a good number of worms remaining in this material. Perhaps even more than I expected. And this to me looks like a banana peel stem. That's the one thing is um, I questioned whether this material had in fact been thoroughly foraged or not. Because, you know, if there's all kinds of remaining lingering leftover food scraps out here, then what's their motivation to leave? Perhaps it is just the drying of the material. That's why I like to use that two-pronged approach, because a lot of times I do feel like I've potentially started the migration of the worms prior to all the material in the bin being picked clean of scraps and leftovers. So with that, you know, in mind, I usually want to try to stack the deck in my favor. So I try to employ the, um, the drying aspect of it as well. To see if we can get the results we're looking for. Okay. What's next? I'm going to bring back this little piece of paper here. Just because I want to be able to rest my, my collection tray right there. In close proximity where I'm working. And I'm pretty much pulling it all out. And I do expect to be able to salvage a lot of this. For the rebuild of the feeding zone and it's for that reason I did my best to use fairly large chunks of paper and stuff stuff that I can pretty much just pick up and shake off if there's any worms on it and then we could reuse it to rebuild the, the feeding area so you know I'm not even going to place a lot of that into the tray there's large chunks of bedding type stuff that we're going to use then we'll just leave it off here on the side and leave space extra space in the tray for mainly worms if possible 
Let's see. I've got a feeling a lot of this fairly dry, leafy stuff on the top surface is also probably worm free too. But there I'm not going to move it all the way over to the other side of the bin. I'm just going to leave it right there on the edge on the paper so we can just slide it right back into place when we're done resetting. Curious to see what kind of leftovers we got here. Obviously any leftover chunks of food can stay here too. But you know what, at this point I am going to start scooping and then we could pick through once it's all out in the clear tray. It'll just be easier to handle everything. And it does seem to me like the, the little divider piece of cardboard that I had placed in between the finished compost and the, the feeding area has for the most part been chewed up by the worms. Oops. So I think we'll just recycle that as bedding. I could just fashion a new replacement barrier cardboard. And it's not really a barrier. It's more for me. It's kind of a visual aid to be able to more easily see where the the two zones um, border each other. Because it's definitely not intended to be a barrier. It's not the right word at all. It's um, it's full of holes. You know, when I put it in there, it's riddled with holes to make it really easy for the worms to pass right through it effortlessly and make their way over into the feeding area. So it's kind of a partition in a way, but it's more just for me to be able to distinguish where the finished compost ends and where the feeding zone begins. Okay, I don't want to pick through the rest of that too much. I'm going to leave it be with the assumption that that's all, for the most part, finished castings that I want to keep in the bin for harvesting later. Like I said, a lot of these um, large scraps of materials as long as we leave the worms behind, we could pick them out and reuse them. Because that's the stuff that the worms really like. The stuff is already nice and damp. It's already um, been infiltrated by all the bacteria and the microbes that the worms really thrive on. So it would be a real shame to start from scratch with a bunch of sterile, clean paper and cardboard reusing all of this existing stuff to me seems like it makes the most sense as long as I can leave behind all the worms that we've managed to collect so that they could be relocated into their new home then we could benefit from the reuse of this material some of these pieces of paper have lots and lots of little baby worms on them baby worms everywhere that's always something I really enjoy seeing Okay, we don't have to go nuts with this either, you know, I mean, it's an ongoing process. And um, I think we've gotten the lion's share of the worms off of that piece of paper. We'll just do the same. We'll kind of try to stick to that 80-20 rule, right? As long as we hit about 80% of what we're after, that should be adequate. And trying to achieve any greater degree of precision is usually... Uh, Kind of working against you at that point in terms of you know achieving efficiency so that kind of rough 80 20 rule usually works in most cases here i think we're actually achieving better than you know 80 percent in terms of getting the worms off it does seem like we're getting the majority off quite easily let's see what other large pieces of material we could keep in here and reuse you can see each piece is pretty large, you know, it's a, just a large swath of newspaper that I cut into nice wide strips. Make it really easy to wipe off and pick out of here, just shake off the little guys that are hanging out on it. And uh, recycle the paper for the next round. And I think it's for that main reason, I kind of expected that I'm going to have a lot of a lot of material that I'm able to salvage out of the feeding area, so I'm not I'm not even equipped with any replacement paper. Although I do believe I should probably whip up another um, perforated dividing um, cardboard partition, just so I can continue to clearly see where the 
finished compost ends and where the feeding area begins. Baby worms everywhere. The baby worms really, I don't know, seem to really enjoy that paper. Maybe that is just one of the easier things for them to chew on, the wood pulp that the paper's made out of. I guess after it starts to break down, the baby worms favor that as a food source, maybe. Or maybe because it's um just nice and damp, sucking in all the moisture onto itself. Lots and lots of baby worms. So small. Very, very tiny baby worms. Yeah, trying to avoid using my clean hand here, but here and there it does seem like it helps. I thought that this piece was folded in half, but maybe it's not. Is it? All right, here again. Let's not go crazy shooting for 100%. Let's just try to get the majority and... Uh, and continue all the while with these bright lights shining overhead any worms that might be on the surface are going to continue to dive down so what we'll probably be left with here after we remove a lot of these large chunks of paper bedding to be recycled is going to be a almost just a, a mound of worms mixed in with their castings that they've created over the past 10 days and maybe a little bit of food scrap too. But so far I can't say that I've really been able to identify any um, discernible chunks of food in here. So it almost seems like they've done away with all the, the actual kitchen scraps that were placed in here as bait for them. I guess that's the main reason I wanted to get back in here too. Because after 10 days, a lot of times I will have already revisited a system like this just to make sure that the food supply has not been diminished yet and to keep the interest level high but I also kind of figured hey chances are we've already collected a good number of worms here so rather than just replenishing the food supply in the feeding area let's just go ahead and initiate the first um, migration of worms out of this system Okay. Yeah, a lot of people would probably just lift up one of these pieces of paper and give it a quick shake, and for them that would probably be sufficient in terms of leaving worms behind, not allowing for a whole bunch of hitchhikers, but I don't know. I just get kind of caught up. So let's see if we could focus on trying to get this job completed in a reasonable amount of time. I do feel like I probably got the majority of these large pieces of paper that were used to build this feeding area. At least it seems that way. So many worms. It does seem like we've gotten ourselves a pretty good turnout here. So it seems like maybe that drying of the finished compost is um, providing these worms with the motivation to leave because that nice, um, that little piece of plastic set up over the feeding area is just doing such a great job, not allowing for any of the moisture in there to evaporate away. And the worms can sense that, I believe, you know. Since moisture is so critical for them, since they breathe through their skin, they probably have the ability to sense that there's um, a certain concentration of moisture somewhere nearby so that they can gravitate towards, towards it. Here too, it's a piece of a avocado skin. We might as well salvage that too to rebuild our feeding zone with. But I'm not going to go crazy picking out all kinds of little tiny food scraps. I'm just really trying to get the um, the bedding bits that I can salvage here. Any little food scraps that remain in here can just go with the worms into their new space. I've got a whole tray of nice fresh food for them but whatever if I find a, a large chunk of something easy enough to pull out I'll grab it too that's actually a slice of a avocado pit believe it or not <laughs> here too stem of a banana peel at this point I'm really feeling like we've I believe we've managed to oh nope here we go we're doing good though I mean if it was this difficult for me to find this piece of paper 
blended in amongst all these worms. There's probably not a whole lot left. I'll just comb through this pile of worms here, see what else I can gather. So I believe this here is just another chunk of paper we can collect. This could be one of the smallest pieces of paper that I used in the creation of this feeding area because I did want to keep it really simple and really easy to handle. If there was all kinds of like finely shredded paper in here, it would be very difficult to salvage it and reuse it. It would just have to stay with the worms and you'd be starting with a fresh batch of bedding. But I think there's a pretty good advantage to using a lot of recycled material in the rebuild of the feeding area. If you're going to do a similar setup in one of your bins to try to round up the worms. All right, I think we've pretty much located and extracted every chunk of large paper bedding that was in here. You can see we've collected a good size amount of it. Um, and besides that, we've also got all this leafy stuff here too. So I don't know if we're going to need much to rebuild this feeding area. If we do, I did bring in some leaves the other day from outside. And I've been a little bit panicky about my using my leaves from outside. Because I've been suspicious that maybe the leaves from outside are the... Um, the source of the mite infestation that I've been observing in some of my bins. So just to play it safe, when I bought that last batch of leaves in from outside, I uh, made a pit stop at the microwave oven. <laughs> in the box that I store those leaves in, I just threw the whole box right into the microwave and I zapped it for a few minutes. And then when I opened up the box, it was steaming and it was hot. So if there was any um, mites or the eggs of mites or anything remaining in that um, collection of leaves, I really hope I managed to uh, to wipe them out so as not to continue introducing pests from outside by bringing leaves in. The leaves I've used up until now over the past couple years have been out of a collection of leaves that I collected years and years ago and they just sat there in leaf bags I had always thought that I'd be able to use that stuff to build a really big hot compost pile outside, which I never did. <laughs> so those couple of leaf bags um, sat and sat and sat for years and dried and dried and dried. And you know, mites definitely thrive in a moist environment. So the fact that the material in those bags had dried out so much is probably the main reason the mites that may have been in there at some point had already left. So I never had a problem with bringing leaves in from outside, but it was more recently that I um, replenished my supply of leaves. Those bags that I had been using just tore and the leaves were spilling out. After a couple years, it's not too surprising. So I grabbed a couple fresh leaf bags and figured I'd re refresh my leaf collection outside. So the leaves I've been hauling in here into my wormery over the past couple months are um, all freshly collected leaves from this past autumn and I suspect that that's where the the mite problem has been stemming from so hopefully hopefully I've solved that issue or at least my theory as to what's originating the problem has been properly identified so that I can take the right measures to avoid further issues so let's leave it at that we're going to haul everything that's in this tray over into the new bin. But before we uh, close up shop here, we've got a little bit of work remaining here, right? We've got to, we've got to rebuild this feeding area. And there's not much to it. It's just a matter of returning all of this bedding that we had um, salvaged. We'll drop in this collection of frozen kitchen scraps. And then we'll cover up with some leaves. But, oops, I almost forgot. I'm going to have to take a quick break here. I'm going to go rinse off my glove just so I can uh, fashion a replacement cardboard divider in here. That should only take a minute or two. But uh, let's pause, and I'll take care of that, and I'll be right back. As you can see, I definitely include a good number of very large holes in the material. That's going to be serving as just a, a visual aid for me to see where the two zones border one another. 
and it'll uh, it'll certainly allow any worms through that want to pass through once they start sensing the goodness over on this side. So not le not much left to do. Just sprinkle some of this bedding material that we salvaged down into the feeding area. I'm going to start laying in the fresh food. Look at the size of this banana. These bananas are huge. <laughs> All right. I got a feeling they're going to really enjoy this. I guess the other benefit of really large chunks like that is that it should be easy enough to salvage them if I need to rebuild this feeding area. Here I've got a whole bunch of carrot peels. I had just used a piece of paper towel to hold them all together. I was trying to keep them together just so I've got them in one place rather than letting it all blend in with my um, assortment of kitchen scraps. Here's some more paper, more bedding that we can recycle. It's not uh, it's not seasoned like the stuff that we salvaged. But you can see we're putting all there all, all kinds of other interesting, tempting things: avocado, cucumber, tomato, asparagus. You name it. All kinds of delicious goodies for the worms to be attracted to. Hopefully they'll all come over in droves. So uh, at the end we'll use this little bit of leaf litter to stack it on top to cover everything up, give it that sort of natural appearance. <laughs> not that it makes such much not that it makes such a big difference. Then here we've got some of the I think this is part of the remnants of the the divider that we had in here previously. I don't even see any of it. it. Just got shredded so thoroughly by the worms. Got a good number of large chunks of newspaper. So easy to handle when you leave them large like this. I usually try to create fairly small sized bedding bits when I can. So I think before we scr sprinkle those leaves back on to cover up with, we'll just use a little bit of coffee as well. Because I've always got coffee, and I assume the worms enjoy that as well. So that's our rebuilt feeding area. At this point it's just a matter of covering everything up and letting the process continue. Let's spread this out nice and neatly here. I don't know why, I just like to use leaves on the top of my systems. I think just because it gives that natural appearance. <laughs> So many people use shredded paper. I just don't have one of those fancy shredders like everyone else does, so I usually gravitate towards using leaves, of which I have plenty of. And hopefully I've also now got a, a method for making sure that the leaves don't end up um, become the, becoming the source of a mite problem. <laughs> it's got a couple worms that, oops made their way onto this fairly dry paper. I think once they realize that they're on a fairly dry piece of paper, they're gonna get the heck off of it on their own accord without me needing to pick them off, but whatever. I figured I'd help them off. And then this, uh, this moisture haven is really the result of this piece of plastic being draped over it. So as all those frozen bits of food start to start to thaw out and emit, emit their moisture, that moisture is locked right into this feeding area to make this into a virtually irresistible spot for the worms. So we're almost there. Let's get their new home out here so we can release those worms. All right, back comes the newly built system. So light, there's nothing going on in here yet. <laughs> That's not true. There is some stuff going on in here. So let me show it to you. So we're just gonna uncover the system here I'm I'm using one of my fancy little uh, plastic covered cardboard lids the cardboard really does do a great job covering up the whole thing edge to edge this thing was built just a few days ago and you could see any of that moisture that was trying to evaporate out has been recirculating and creating little puddles on the top of the, the bin 
All these leaves were the ones I talked about earlier, the ones that I bought in, but first I nuked them. <laughs> and if you go down deeper, there's a whole lot of cardboard underneath the, the top layer of leaves. The majority of what we've got down here is, in fact, um, cardboard. A whole bunch of chopped up tubes of paper towel tube or um, toilet paper tube, a whole bunch of cardboard bits, some toilet. Uh, some chopped up coffee filter paper, all kinds of paper down in there, as well as a whole bunch of kitchen scraps littered throughout the material everywhere. A lot of small fine chopped stuff that went in here frozen has since thawed out and emitted its own moisture too. So this should be a pretty cozy spot for the worms to make themselves at home. The, um, the last secret ingredient that I placed in here, which is something I always recommend that people use is the, um, the finished castings. So over the past few days, those finished castings bought with them bacteria and microbes and fungi and all those other things that really, um, really set up the environment so that the worms can uh, feel quite at home and comfortable in there. So hopefully those um, microscopic organisms have already started breaking down the food bits in here too, so that the worms, when they get in here, um, have a, a ready meal that they can take advantage of. So... Let's not wait any longer. Let's introduce these little guys to their new home. This will be our one chance to see how many worms we've managed to round up in this effort. So I'll do my best to spread them out a bit. And then um, I'd love to hear people's ideas as far as how many you think I've managed to collect here. So let's get them released into their new home. One, two, three. Just make sure we don't have any lingering behind in the box here. They all came out quite clearly, cleanly. <laughs> I don't know if clean is a good word to use in a worm bin, but you know what I mean. They seem to have come out quite cleanly. And I, I guess my main reason, not only to see how many we've got, but I like to spread them out so they're not just a bunch of worms piled up on top of each other. If they're piled up, they, the guys on top just don't have easy access to the material right below them. So this way I just give all of them an easy chance to burrow down into the bedding and take shelter from the bright light. So let's give them a few minutes to make themselves at home and then we'll be done. All right, a lot of times I'll wait the entire time, whatever amount of time it takes to make sure there's no worms visible, but more and more as time goes on, I feel like I should just give these little guys a break. <laughs> Even though there's a number of them still out here on the surface, we're not going to wait for them to vanish. We're going to get things covered up and put away here. So uh, I've got a couple pieces of paper towel here that I had um, I'd actually used these to drain my, uh, and to dry off of some bacon that I had prepared the other day. <laughs> so hopefully the grease on there doesn't bother the worms too much. I don't think it will. But um, but that's pretty much where we stand. That's it. We, um, we've got ourselves a brand new bin here. Let's get everything covered up and oh yeah, one thing. Keeping with tradition, it's at this time that we christen our new bin and welcome it to the family by affixing a sticker to indicate the bin's launch date, last day of February. Snuck in a new bin on February, the last day of February. Didn't want to miss out on having a, a bin launched this month, so I was able to squeeze it right there at the last minute. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. Have a great day. Take care.